Hey, this is Rocket Brain Surgeon. Today we're looking at the KV-1S. We're following Garbad around on Muravanka. And the KV-1S is a Tier 6 Russian Heavy, characterized by very good mobility, solid armor, and a huge gun for Tier 6. Seriously, this thing is massive. With 175 base penetration and 390 alpha, it can pretty much one-shot most lower tier tanks and two-shot a lot of tier 6 tanks and still be a credible threat to a lot of higher tier tanks. It is absolutely crazy, totally broken, it's in line for a nerf, and it totally deserves the nerf. There are two knocks against the tank, maybe three. One of them is very poor gun handling, the aim time is forever, the accuracy is not impressive, so sometimes sniping from long range, you're going to get some very unpredictable results. Sometimes good, sometimes not so great. Another one is view range. The tank is pretty blind, so in higher tier games especially, it can have problems where it's facing down invisible enemies. And the third problem is damage per minute. It's kind of on the low side, so if you miss one of your shots, your enemies can abuse your long reload time. However, all three of those downsides can be minimized by peekabooming from hardcover relatively close to the enemy. Now we're on Murovanka, and the peekabooming from close range is not exactly possible here. He could move to that E2 space, but he does risk getting overwhelmed, uh, as well as facing invisible snipers from the J1 area by the church where they like to hide. You're going to notice that he's using the auto-aim a lot when he's firing at these tanks, and the reason why is the penetration is sufficient enough to go through anything anywhere in this game. It's kind of crazy how much penetration the KV-1S gets in addition to all of its other strengths. Now, he's shooting purely gold ammo, but that's just for show. It's probably increasing his penetration rate by like 5%. It's really nothing big at all. The other reason why the auto-aim is going to work so well is because the shell size is 122 millimeters, and that's going to overmatch on a lot of tanks. What is overmatching? It's when you have the shell that's hitting the piece of armor be two or three times as thick. So there's a 122 millimeter shell. A lot of the tier tanks are going to have like 50 millimeter thick armor in places and that means since it's over twice that it gets a penetration bonus so the auto aim it wherever it hits who cares it's going through for the most part the T-150 on his team moved into that E2 area and he's finding one of the problems that you can have is you can meet several enemies that you didn't know were there and so the T-150 is kind of in a bit of a pickle if he moves out of that area, he's forced to deal with the snipers on J1. Garbad's going to help him out, but there's not a lot he can do. The T-150 kind of overcommitted. That shot was displaying that wonderful accuracy I was talking about before. Sometimes you just cannot count on the shots to land. The T-150 in the E2 area got taken out by a Type 58 that no one can see. The view range is a real problem especially on a map like Maravanka where there's just long sight ranges. See, the Type 58 really wasn't that far away, about 250 meters and firing, and neither the KV-1S nor the T-150 spotted him. You saw that a couple shots bounced off of the turret of the KV-1S. It's a very round turret that's going to get a bunch of bounces. The armor on the KV-1S is not particularly thick, However, it is more angled than its predecessor, the KV-1. It's definitely sturdy enough. You don't want to rely on it against, like, Tier 8 tanks or anything. But it's going to give you solid protection while you have that horribly long aim time. We're moving into the later stages of the game, and these are the stages that are not exactly beneficial to the KV-1S. There's not a lot of hard cover around, there are not a lot of teammates that are going to light up enemies and simply swarming the KV-1S instead of playing peekaboom with it is just the way to take it down. So, not a lot going right so far. Garbat is actually going to retreat here as he can't push. Again, he's pushing into invisible tanks. He has to more or less wait 
for them to come to him. Hopefully they over push. The KV-1 takes out the KV-3, which is awesome. Garbad's going to make his way towards artillery and try to protect the few teammates he does have left. Again, he cannot push into invisible tanks. Don't try to make the tank do something that it can't. The ideal situation that he's shooting for here is to save the T-50 and artillery so they have some form of vision. The T-50 can spot artillery and garbage with their big alpha can just annihilate the team one by one. But the problem is everybody's just going to get taken out and uh, he's going to have to do a last stand. Not the greatest situation ever. And there goes our artillery. So, what do you do with a blind tank that has a very slow reload? You find hardcover. He's going to make his way over to the building and try to make a last stand from there. Uh, that will give him not only the hardcover to duck behind and peekaboom from, but it will also protect from artillery. And here we have the blind finding the blind. The KV-1 still has not spotted Garbad. And that magic Russian KV-1 armor manages to bounce a shot to its side. That's just amazing. So he's hiding in between reloads, pulling out with some reverse angling to the KV-1, who still does not see him until that shot. And Artie lets loose, and we are pulling the last stand in earnest at this point. So one of the subtle things there that Garbat did was he angled slightly so that the KV-1 would have a little bit more problems penetrating the front. The KV-1 did something smart and he's hiding behind a dead tank. This not only prevents Garbat from spotting him easier, it also means that he has to shoot at his turret, a smaller target, and that accuracy of the KV-1S might not be able to um, hit the turret capably. The KV-1 is just magic, so Garbad in this little endgame stretch here will shoot at one of the two KV-1s five times and only penetrate twice with a 217 penetration gun, 122 millimeters against 75 millimeters of armor. Okay, whatever. It's a tough little tank, that KV-1. With the two artillery and the remaining KV-1 firing HE with Garbad at 14 hit points, we need a miracle, and the cap is almost up. It's desperation YOLO time. That's not going to quite work out. Still, this was a 4,000 damage game. That ain't bad. Carbad wrote a full review. Link in the comments. Hope you enjoyed. Happy hunting.